A simple yet useful and effective method of creating a statistical surface is known as nearest neighbor, which uses Thiessen polygons, which you may be familiar with already. So Thiessen polygons, also sometimes referred to as Voronoi diagrams, same thing, is that they indicate regions of influence and they go on this assumption that every th location inside one of these Thiessen polygons is closer to the source point than to any other point. So the values of unknown points are assigned according to the value of the closest point. So to me this is a really simple, nice, elegant application of Tobler's law is what we're saying is that for any given point location, let's say it's this one here, that any location that's closer to that point than to any other point will be assigned the same value as that point, okay? So this one here. So if you're here or here or here, because these are all closer to this point than to any other one, based on the fact that we have this polygon uh, boundary, then it's going to say, well, if it's closer, then it's more similar. And because this is a pretty simple method, it's not just saying it's similar, it's saying it's exactly the same. So this is how Thiessen polygons work in a raster data set. We have cells that have a value here, so we have uh, some, a two there and some ones up here. And then what happens is, is for any given location, it says, well, which, which cell that has a value is closest? And it turns out in this case that, let's see, that would be this cell over here. And because it's closest to the original data cell there, it's being assigned the same value. And so all of the polygon, all of the cells in each polygon get that same value. So that would be one polygon, and obviously this would be another polygon. That's it. Fairly straightforward. So let's have a look at some elevation sample points for Joker's Hill. And what I've done here is I've uh, applied a Euclidean distance tool with this rather, uh, I don't know, colorful color scheme. Uh, I did that up for a reason though, so that you'd be able to see the ranges of, of values quite easily. And so what's happening here is that when we construct the Thiessen polygon boundaries using a tool called allocation, that's the ArcGIS term for, for this, is that you'll see that you can actually get a visualization of the boundaries between each set of sample points, each pair, let's say, to see that, okay, that's a point where, or that's a, a line that's of equal distance from two sample points. It's also a way of being able to visualize areas like this that are farther away from any sample point. So they're bluer because they have a farther distance based on this weird color scheme I'm using. And it also shows that there's a lot of boundaries uh, intersecting here. And this is an area where you might actually say this might be a good location for more sample points if we were to go back and do it again. And so these are elevation values that have been assigned to these Thiessen polygons based on the sample point values. And so I have created a statistical surface using allocation to create these Thiessen polygons. So you'll notice, uh, hopefully you're noticing this now, is that the color of the polygon is exactly the same as the color of the sample point, which implies and, and shows, I hope, that it is actually indeed the exact same value. So the estimated value for each polygon is exactly the same as the sampled value, Therefore, this is a method that is an exact interpolator. Just for fun, I put this into ArcScene so I could visualize it in 3D. And the, the main reason I did this is just to really emphasize this idea that, of course, this is not the most realistic interpolation method for elevation, is that we're getting this idea that we have a perfectly flat area in our landscape, then a, a perfectly uh, steep cliff, and then another value here. So we have like, you know, these very, um, abrupt changes in values based on this interpolation method. We're getting these kinds of little cliff faces, which of course is not really what we're going to see in reality. And just to take this a step further, I actually draped an air photo on top of this just so you could visualize it. And of course, yeah, this is not, not working that well, but it's a nice place to kind of start if you're getting into the idea of interpolation is it's a simple method. It does, uh, for some types of things, it works relatively well, as we'll see. While I was doing this, I started to think about, you know, what is it that I'm looking at here and how does this relate to what I'm seeing with my resulting data? So this is elevation data 
And this is the digital elevation model that I use to, be, to uh, create those sample points. Now, resist the temptation from thinking that this is reality or this is the truth. This is still an estimated surface. I would say I think it's of much higher quality based on the, uh, the way that it looks and uh, the assumptions I'm making about how it was created. But uh, let's sort of treat it as kind of much closer to reality. And so if we compare our Thiessen polygon boundaries to this landscape, we can kind of start to think about like, how would we describe the, the nature of this data in a little more detail or a little more in a more sophisticated way? One way we can do that is by looking at the standard deviation of the values. So remember, the whole idea here is that we're trying to use our sample points to estimate or interpolate values where we don't have a sample point. And so we might be interested in looking at, well, is there a lot of variability within each of the polygons? If there's not much variability compared to our DEM, if we do have some other data set we can use as a reference like we're doing here. So if there's not much of, uh, of a difference, in other words, if the standard deviation values are low within each polygon, that's probably a good thing. If they're high, that means we're not capturing the variability that we might. This is sort of a bit of a mind exercise, let's say. So here I've made the standard deviation layer semi-transparent so you can see the DEM underneath. And I'm just trying to encourage you to kind of think about like what's happening here, what are you seeing? Why do we have higher standard deviations for some parts of the landscape and lower for others? What might be causing that variability when we're talking about a variable like elevation? Hmm, what could that be? Maybe it has to do with slope. That would make sense, right? So if you have a steeper slope, then there's more variability in the elevation values. You're going to have more different values for a given area. So higher variability, higher standard deviation, and so that would be related to slope values. So here I put together a little comparison for the same locations, and you can see that, for example, if you have a lot of variability here, so we're going from high values in either side to low values in the middle where there's a valley, and you can see for that same polygon that we have steep slopes with flat areas in the middle, and then sure enough, down here, we're getting a high standard deviation value because we have a lot of variability. So it's not to say, just so you're not confusing things, high standard deviation doesn't mean high elevation, it means a lot of different values. Whereas if we have something like, let's say this polygon here, and you'll see that the slope is actually fairly uh, even all the way across, so it's fairly flat, we have a low standard deviation because there's not much variation in that variable. I know we're talking about elevation, but I do think it's a way of trying to sort of visualize or think about how we can quantify differences or analyze them or, or, or look at you know, what's happening with the nature of this particular data set. So let's try the same method for our zinc levels with our Dutch soil sediment data set. So first, I'm going to do Euclidean distance now, you don't have to do this first when you're creating Thiessen polygons. I'm just doing it to help us visualize what, what's happening here. So I don't think you have to do this yourself every time. Although sometimes I do it for this reason because I want to kind of see what's going on. So here's our Thiessen polygon boundaries using the allocation tool. And here's our zinc levels based on our nearest neighbor method. Okay, so again, remember this is an exact interpolator. And this actually is not bad. You know, you're getting a decent uh, kind of surface here. It's based on the existing sample points. So the size of the polygon, of course, is related to how many other sample points are nearby. And if we look at this in 3D, it kind of gives us a way of visualizing the nature of the data. Where are the values high? Where are they lower? Kind of makes sense. Remember, this has to do with flood frequency. Uh, so we have the river along here, and you'll notice that a lot of the zinc values are high right next to the river. So it's easier to sometimes see things like that when you're looking at a 3D model or 3D rendering of it. And as we move away, the uh, concentrations drop off quite a bit. If I look at it from a different angle, maybe it's easier to see. So the river is over here. So these are values that are much lower, which kind of makes sense as we move farther away from the river. But we're also seeing that there are still patches of high values here. So maybe something else is going on there. Why, that, why might that be? 
It could be that the area where the concentrations are low might be a higher elevation, so it's not flooded as often, okay? Whereas you, maybe you have a low area on either side here where the water tends to settle and uh, has more time to deposit sediments that may be contaminated. So I'm not gonna go into that whole analysis here, but we're looking at you know, uh, a surface interpolation here, the statistical surface, and of course, once we do that, we wanna start interpreting it as geographers and say, well, why is this happening? What processes are taking place? What's influencing the results that we're getting?